Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 2022 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition, eight box, pick your team at number five. There's the big jumbo case right there. Thanks everybody for getting in. Thanks everybody here for getting in. Appreciate it. On a Sunday, pick your team five. And there's everybody right here. Thanks everybody for picking your team. If you got a little rooftop next to your name, that means you won that team in the filler. And Tim, you ended up with Last Spot Mojo with the Brew Crew. All right, now let's pop this open. Let's get this going. There you go. Jumbo, three autographs per box on average, I assume. Let's see what we got. Good luck, everybody. We got the Kings game on in the background. They're hanging on. They're leading the Oilers 2 nothing. Got 14 minutes left in the game. Remember, no vet paper, no rookie paper, no prospect paper ships. Only Bowman first paper card. Among the paper cards, only Bowman first paper will ship. Obviously, all chrome cards will ship. All numbered cards, all inserts, all that other usual stuff. Now, some of you who possess the ears of a fox may be thinking, Joe, that organ, that organist at the, this is, a, this is a Oilers at Kings, you might be thinking to yourself, that organist sounds really similar to when you're listening to Dodger games and I hear organists out there. Yeah, same guy. Dodgers are in, uh, the Dodgers are on the road, so. You'll play at the Kings games. And you're thinking, Joe, what if the Kings and Dodgers are at home at the same time? I don't know what happens. I think he tries to do both. Well, especially one's a day game, one's a night game. I, I would assume he'd do the playoff games as opposed to a regular season Dodger game. If there are some scheduling conflicts, but anyhow. So yeah, all these Bowman first papers will ship. G Lo saying, there's a guy on TikTok I follow, keyboards for the Atlanta Hawks. You really have to be on your toes for that. What to be a to be like the keyboardist, the organist at a, a sporting event? I think so. All right, because you have, you have to have a log of, a whole different log of songs in your head. There's Eduardo Vaughn. And we'll do an autograph recap at the end too. And then be able to pull those songs out of out of your out of your arsenal and be able to play it at the uh, at the appropriate times, you know.
There's Randy Vasquez, 482 out of 499 for the Yankees. That'll be for Mark Bissett and the Bronx Bombers. And there's Brandlin Haraba to 4.99 paper. Just in the interest of time, we're gonna set those aside and have our shipping team sleeve and top load those. Right, you gotta be playing a song and then you gotta then then get into defense pretty quickly. The defense chant. Kind of makes me wish I would have stuck with uh, with the piano early in my life. There's Kevin Alcantara to 125. That's for the Cubs. It's for Mark. And there's uh, Brian Bellow. 136 out of 399. Lime green paper for Ben and the Red Sox. And there's Felix Valerio. 151 out of 499. Our third and final autograph of the box. That'll be for Tim and the Brewers. Last spot mojo. Strikes again. It's the last team taken before we pulled the rest of these teams for the uh, for the team random. Oh really? He's just standing in the middle of a concourse on the upper deck watching the game? I don't I actually don't know. I know the, the Dodgers keyboardist. They've got their own little room. I don't know where where it is at Staples slash Crypto.com Arena now, as it's called. I think they might have their own like little office at, in a in a box that overlooks the the game. There's Shoei Otani, lime green to three ninety nine. That is for Tim and the Angels. And here's uh, Nico Cavadas. Avada Cadavas to 499. Don't say that. That's it's a killing curse. All right, box one in the books. You okay, Teddy? Oh, okay. <laughs> Teddy, Teddy was explaining. All right, we'll do an autograph recap at the end. Speaking of audio at arenas, Gilo, and everybody else listening, um, I, read, I stumbled across a great article, I think in The Athletic, maybe, at... At Dallas Mavericks games, if you ever wondered, again, if you have uh, fox-like ears, you may be able to, to pick up on this. The, uh, the basketball, and, and this, is, this goes for being at the, at the arena too. The basketball going through the net, uh, apparently is the best at Dallas. So obviously when TV broadcast they mic the they mic the nets, right? Um, to to mix that into the sound when you're watching a basketball game. They also pump that sound into the arena as well. So they amplify the sound of the basket 
fall when it goes through the net, right? So you're saying, Joe, you're thinking Joe. So how do they do that? Is it automated? Is it, you know? No, some dude does it by hand. So what they discovered is that they added their own arena mics and I guess there was a feedback loop if you if they just left it on. Right? It would loop through and it would be for bad TV or something like that. It would it would loop through the TV audio and then there would be a feedback loop and it would be terrible because there's two different microphones and they're amplifying it to the to the arena sound and all that sort of stuff. So what so there's a guy whose job so uh, everyone knows what a what a mixing board is, right? There's a whole board and there's like these little tabs that you put up, put up, put up and down to raise or lower the the volume. Look it up. Google if you don't know what it is. So there's a guy with the little mixing board knob that slides up and down who will every time there's a basket, he'll go he'll put that up and down like that. So he watches someone take take a shot you know, it looks like a clean shot and it goes to the net and does by it's by hand. So now the audio can now be the sound of the basket going through the net can now be pumped through the arena and not feedback loop through the TV cameras to the TV microphones and it works and that split second doesn't feedback. Crazy, right? But that's why people often say that the that the basketball going through the net may sound the best at uh, at Dallas. I think a few other arenas do it too because I want to say the article had said that Mark Cuban um, that Mark Cuban discovered that some other arena did this, and he thought that the basketballs that just audio wise just sounded great. And he wanted it. <laughs> All right. There's Anthony Rodriguez, 198 to 299. Speckle autograph for the Giants. Justin with the Giants. Right. I mean, those microphones probably can pick up a ton of other things, too. Maybe telling, maybe Jason Kidd telling people to bump it to so and so. And we've got a nice yellow autograph, Luis Gill, forty seven out of seventy five. That, that parallel really pops. That goes to Mark Bissett and the Yankees. Nice. Got uh, Robert Hassel out of 125 blue paper for the Padres, their eighth overall pick. And it's Brian Peoples and the Padres. There you go, Brian. All right, we got Felix Valerio. Bowman first autograph for the Brew Crew. That's going to be for Tim. Last ball mojo striking again. That's your third and final autograph of the box. So maybe parallels. Maybe we find a train whistle in here. That'd be nice. Two of the top five in the NHL. The 
And there's Hedward Perez, blue shimmer to 150 for the Brewers. It's a parallel for Tim and the Brew Crew. All right, another box down. Next box. Everyone watched the F1 today? It was in Miami. Goal there, Blake. I think it was the first race in my first F1 race in Miami ever, or maybe the first time in a long time. But I think that was the second. That was the second U.S. race. I think Austin regularly regularly was on the schedule. And now Miami got one, and it looked pretty exciting. A lot of celebrities there. The weather looks great. You know, the area around it looks pretty cool. They had it around the Hard Rock Stadium, which is where uh, where the Dolphins still play, right? So it was a pretty pretty exciting. Uh, Pretty exciting area. So then the US. Nice. Great goal. Ooh, and a little fight breaking out. So now the U.S. will have three races next year. I think Austin's still on the schedule. Miami will still be on the schedule. And then Vegas in November 2023. That should be really exciting. I'm going to see if I can... I think I have to save up for pretty much the en entire year. But you know, I pretty much have to start saving now. I think it's going to be really expensive. If you want to do even a, a few nights plus, plus a weekend package or something like that. I think hotel is going to be outrageously expensive. There's Christian Gonzalez for the Astros. That'll be for Nicholas. Yeah, Gilo's saying, hey, I've been hearing a lot about F1 lately. Is it because of the Netflix show? I think that has a lot to do with it. So I think, I think a big media company bought F1. Maybe someone correct me if I'm wrong. Some maybe a bigger F1 fan can maybe kind of fill in some of the the the, the sort of details I don't have. 
There's Dustin Harris 250. I'm pretty sure that a big media company bought F1, the entire league, maybe four or five years ago, maybe even maybe a little bit longer. There's Luis Matos green paper to 99 for the Giants. And then they're the ones that commissioned this F1 show. And then Netflix, of course, got the distribution rights for it. And um, it's a show that recaps the previous season, I think, basically. Although I think it'd be great if they were able to, to do it like hard knocks, like do it during the season, but maybe that's a little more difficult, but... But anyhow, they they'll they'll dramatize and embellish a lot of storylines, and you know, I think some some F one fans kind of watch and they're like, oh, but that incident was from a different race, so we'll just kind of goof around with a little bit of that and create a little extra drama, little storylines that may not quite be there. But yeah, that that show apparently was doing pretty well for a couple seasons. There's Andre Lara to 125 for EA and the Nats. And then, during the pandemic, all right, people stuck at home and all that. And I think that show is maybe two or three seasons in already. So that was one of the, one of the more bingeable type shows that were around. People binged it, got really into F1. So that trickled into a lot of people watching the sport. There's Dayton Dooney to 150. Royals autograph, nice little color match for Andrew. And, of course, for us, for the hobby, you know, because of that and more interest in F1, especially here in, in the States, that turned into a big boon for F1 trading cards. So in the last couple of years, F1 trading cards, especially like, you know, especially like Topps Chrome and stuff like that and Sapphire, you know, like interest in that has just gone through the roof and secondary market values have been really huge on those as well, especially if you get some of the top drivers like, you know, like Lewis Hamilton, you know, who's a little bit on the older side, but, you know, is a legend already. There's Zach Veen to 250, blue paper for the Rockies, Stephen Flat, And then drivers like Max Verstappen, you know, has already been pretty popular. There's young drivers like George Russell and Lando Norris who are coming up the ranks. There's Josh Yost with the Tampa Bay Rays, 9 out of 50. And, um, you know, and then like kind of legendary, legendary like teams like Ferrari are starting to really do well this season. And so I'm sure that has helped the value of like Charles Leclerc and other other Ferrari stuff. G, uh, GS Dash, Greg saying, I still have no idea I found you guys, but your channel definitely in my top. In my tops. Random, just thought I'd say it. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Have you have you tried have you tried the rest, Greg? Or are you just are you just saying that? You gotta try the rest first and then and then then you'll know we're the best. There's Juan Yepes among the best. Purple paper to 250. Thank you though. I think uh, I think our community has a lot to do with it do with it too. Guys like Gilo have been watching us for for years. You have been to a lot of different places, okay. So you have tried the rest. Well, thanks. Gilo doesn't remember anything from, on Netflix from the start of the pandemic except for Tiger King. Yeah, I definitely binged Tiger King. Yeah, I, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I have not watched any of that F1 show. I did get more into F1, but I haven't watched that F1 show at all. It's on the list. A long list of things I, I, I need to watch. Do 
Joe's the Vince Scully of breaks, Chilo says. That's awfully kind of you. But, but I try. You know, we, we don't get too high here. We don't get too low here. We let the card speak for itself. Just like when there's a home run, Vince Scully lets the, lets the, uh, lets the crowd do the talking. So he leaves a lot of space. <laughs> well, gilo has been around long enough not to make that mistake. Although current Dodger TV play-by-play -play guy Joe Davis is a little... A little Joe Bucky, but I think without the, without maybe the the pompousness that Joe Buck sometimes has. Isn't it, speaking of Joe Buck actually, um, isn't it crazy that Joe Buck and Troy Aikman are gonna do Monday Night Football? Is that right? Monday Night Football at ESPN. And then Al Michaels, I think everyone thinks, is going to go to Amazon Prime to do the Thursday night games. So there's going to be... So I think Joe Buck is going to do... Um, I guess Joe Buck will do all the main... The, the big Fox games where the, where the lead broadcast group goes. I think Joe Buck... Sorry, since Joe Buck's at ESPN, I think... That also means Joe Davis will be doing the World Series on Fox. Well, there'll be less Joe Buck baseball wise, Greg, which is which I'll which I'm okay with. There's Torkelson to two ninety nine, Speckle for Kenny and the Tigers. I actually don't mind Joe Buck NFL wise. But not a fan of him doing doing baseball. Didn't didn't Fox have the Masters at one point, and Joe Buck was doing like Sundays? I don't know if I like that either. There's Alejandro Hidalgo. 285 out of 499 refractor autograph for the Angels Tim Burke As a Giants fan Greg saying I feel spoiled kind of ha having uh Oh yeah that John Miller's still up in San Francisco that's a Yeah John Miller is pretty so I wish John Miller did still would still do uh, Sunday Night Baseball. That'd be great. Dodgers have Joe Davis. Um, at home, I think Oral Hershiser does, does a lot of the color commentary at home. And I think road games, they, they're, they're experimenting with a few different people. I, th I think Oral Hershiser doesn't want to do as many road games anymore. Um, a little on the older side. I think they, they had Jessica Mendoza do color commentary for the Dodgers. She's with the Dodgers Network now. And I don't know, whatever question marks you may have had about her doing Sunday Night Baseball on ESPN, I mean, I think that might have just been just the crew that she was with because with Joe Davis, I think she was, she was really solid. Um, for the Cubs weekend here, the... Um, the color commentator, Dontrell Willis. Thought Dontrell Willis really did a really did a great job. The short sample size, because I think this was his debut, but he was great in the booth. Just really brought a brought a different energy. Oh, Eric Karros also does some some games too, some color commentary. There's Lenin Sosa.
But yeah, the um, Eric Carlos is a little more old school, and will uh, be a little more, yeah, a little more old school, a little more dry, maybe for the older audiences. Dontrell Willis definitely was a lot of fun, well, was a lot of fun. He kept it really loose, but you know, obviously, really smart baseball guy. Dusty with the Pirates, and just had. A lot of just really interesting stories and a lot of funny things to say. Really dug it. Gilo likes Joe Tessitore. Yeah, wh what's he doing? Well, there there's a there's a Sunday night football vacancy, right? So Monday Night Football on ESPN will be Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. So that takes care of Monday Night Football. Sunday Night Football is losing Al Michaels, probably to Prime. So who has Sunday Night Football? And I don't know if... And I don't know what's happening with... Um, sorry, I'm blanking on the... Uh, the color commentator next to Collinsworth. I was like, I was like, Bengals receiver, uh, Collinsworth. So I don't know what what the deal with Collinsworth is. If he's going to be paired with the new play-by-play -play guy, or if he's out too, or if he's going to go to prime. I mean, if you're Al Michaels, you probably want to say, hey, go buy out Chris Collinsworth and pay him to come to Amazon Prime. Let's do Thursday night football together. There's Alejandro Pa for the Rays. So then that leaves the Sunday night football window open, which they will probably put Drew Brees as the color commentator, and then they'd have to find a play-by-play -play guy. So I think Drew Brees is at NBC, and he's been kind of being groomed to either be in the studio or, or they'll probably try him out in the booth. Just have to find a play-by-play -play guy, I guess. There's Pedro Leon to 4.99. Astros. That'll be for Nicholas. All right, folks, we are halfway through this break. Got about another 30 minutes to go. Thanks, everyone, for hanging with me through this longer break. And we've got a couple quicker breaks coming up after this. So this will take us maybe about 15 minutes past the top of the hour or so. And then we've got a couple quick breaks to close out the evening because I think that'll bring us pretty much to the end of the night. Check the schedule, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like Matt Kemp will be a Dodger announcer someday. Yeah, I could see. I don't know. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if any former athlete has has the play-by-play -play skills, but yeah, in the booth that'd be nice. Nice Kings with an empty net goal. They're up four nothing. All right, nice bounce back after getting shellacked the last couple of games by the Oilers. Uh, G Dash learned from learned strikeout alley from Vin Scully. Still don't understand why everyone does it either. I don't. I don't. I don't think I know what strikeout alley is. I always like deuces are wild. Man, that's another Vin Scullyism, and he would say deuces are and the deuces are wild. Two men on, two and two the count, and two outs. Bottom of the second inning. Rodney Harrison could probably do some color. Maybe he could be in the booth too. He already does studio work, right? Every time someone strikes out, they look towards that field. Oh, looking at the video board. Was that a strike? Should I have swung at that?
There's Nico Avada Cadavas. That is for the Red Sox, Ben Smith. There you go, good job, Kings. Nice bounce back. Speaking of announcers, um, really like the uh, the MLB TV app. Also gives you uh, MLB radio too. I think maybe you might be able to do radio separately. There's Adrian Sugatsi to 199 Fuchsia for the Giants. That's for Justin because you can listen to the different announcers across the country. I think it's great. Obviously, um, Brewers announcer. Why am I blanking on the Brewers announcer? There's Freddie Freeman, 75. Got too many things going on. I got a break here. I got... It's really fun to listen to. Um, but Dennis Eckersley, I, I didn't realize... Until you kind of, until you really look into it, I didn't realize Dennis Eckersley has come up with a lot of different, um, a lot of different baseballisms. There's Luke Waddle for Oliver Smith and the Braves. Like I think, I think he coined walk off. Maybe it's been said before him, but he definitely popularized it. I think he's popularized a lot of different phrases. You can probably go. I think there's. Like websites or blog posts dedicated to like dedicated to uh, echisms. Who is that pitcher you guys would always use to try to get bonds out? I'm sure there are a lot of pitchers <laughs> the Dodgers used to try to get Barry Bonds out. Unsuccessfully, I might add, for a lot of teams in the league. A bond stopper? I don't know if there is ever. I don't know. Hideo Noma was a starter. There's Trey Sweeney, fuchsia paper to 299 for the Yankees. That'll be for Mark. There's Larry Ernesto, 366 out of 499. Tim with the Brew Crew, last spot mojo, hitting a few times here. Malcolm Nunez refractor to 4.99. Next box. Last ball mojo, kind of real. 70% of the time it works 100% of the time. So there are times where it doesn't. A lot of times it does though. It's not guaranteed. You know, for the long for the longest time, last ball mojo was 
as low as 55% of the time. It goes, the market on last spot mojo goes up and down. But I think over the years it crept up to like 65, 60%, 65%, 70%. I don't know when a market correction is going to happen. It might happen. You know, there might be, there may be a run where last spot mojo is just not helping anybody out. Good luck everybody, next box. Anyone remember any uh, Dodgers Rocky relievers in the late 90s, early 2000s that was an alleged, was an alleged, uh, Bonds killer. Kim? No. Dod Diamondbacks had Byung Hung Kim back in that day. That was their closer, who I think was a submarine style pitcher, wasn't he? Or... There is Tyler uh, Tyler Hardman, 399 out of 499, refractor autograph for the Yankees. That's for Mark. <laughs> right. If, the, if, if Last Bot Mojo. If uh, if demand out out exceeds exceeds supply, if there's last bot mojo inflation. Yeah, the Fed may have to raise some rates to try to keep inflation from just getting too hot. Much to, to the to the chagrin of last bot mojo people who have equity in last bot mojo. And then how, how would I describe that? I'd be like, well, the last Bond Mojo just doesn't go as far as it used to. There's Jay Allen to 499 paper for the Reds. That'll be for Mark Bissett. And there's Marcelo Meyer for the Red Sox to 125. I was just gonna say after I saw that Marcelo Meyer to 125, I was like, sometimes these can be numbered, or autographed that is. And here it is, Christian Hernandez, Bowman Top 100 Auto, 27 out of 50. He's no, he's 82 on the list. That will be for Mark and the Cubbies. Nice one. Jason Jaspi there? Jason Jaspi, get on TV.
No, don't see Jason Jaspi in the post-game crowd. Should have told him to do that. There's Brett Beatty to 250. Purple Chrome for the Mets. That's Armando with that one. Wow, it's a little ambitious. I've seen an autograph for the Bowman 3Ds too. Those are pretty cool. I don't know if Hi-Fi has autos. Let's see what other inserts we can find that have autos. There's Luca Tresh, 51 out of 125 for the Royals. That'll be for Andrew. I don't know if Vibrations has an auto. And our third auto of the box is George Valera. Cleveland, this is for you. Bennett with the Cleveland Guardians won that spot in the team random. Shot Jason Jaspi? No, no, Jason Jaspi. All right, second to last box. Good luck, everybody. This is uh, 2022 Bowman Baseball 8-Box Jumbo Pick Your Team 5. We've got more in the store. Check it out. JaspiesCaseBreak.com A Bowman a day, they say. Like, don't quote me on this. This may not be backed by, by science, but a, I hear that a Bowman case a day keeps the doctor away. That's what I, that's what I heard. So let's do some more tomorrow as well. So start buying your spots and teams now. And if you start buying your teams now, we could probably avoid, maybe avoid a filler or those extra hurdles we got to do to unlock a break. All right, good luck everyone. Next box, another three autos. And there's Jason Santana. 63 out of 499. Mark with the Cubs. There's Johendrik uh, Pinango. Lava to 399. Lava parallels look really cool. Cubs, that'll be uh, for Mark.
Ian Lewis, 31 out of 250, purple chrome autograph going to, not autograph, but purple chrome card going to Ryan and the Fish. Oswaldo Cabrera. Lime green paper to three ninety nine for the Yankees. And we got Ricardo Genovis. Bowman first autograph for Justin and the Giants. And there's Brian Bellow. 283 out of 299. Speckle autograph for Boston. That's going to be for Ben and Boston. With uh, Brian Bellow. Good alliteration there. All right, final box and the autograph recap coming up. We made it, folks. Thank you for hanging with me here. Any other uh, any baseball news happening here? I guess Reds activating Luis Castillo from the 10-day injured list. He may be a mid-season trade candidate with the with the Reds kind of shedding some of their players there. They might want to get a big haul for Luis Castillo if he comes off his injury pretty well. Chris Paddock leaves the game with elbow inflammation. White Sox to activate Yuan Mankata and Joe Kelly from the 10-day IL. There's also a 15-day IL. Angels place David Fletcher on the 15-day IL due to a hip strain. Pirates placing Roberto Perez on the 10-day IL. Oh no, Dodgers Victor Gonzalez to undergo arthroscopic surgery. Gerardo Parra retires. Angels re-sign Juan Ligueras to a minor league deal. And Cubs place Marcus Stroman on the injured list and option Frank Schwindel.
And there's Edgar Cueto for the Angels. Tim with the Halos. We got Dustin Harris. Aqua Shimmer to 125 for the Rangers. That'll be for Louie. What happened to Yoenis Cespedes? I don't know. Maybe you were, uh, maybe your brain was uh, was triggered by uh, Yoelki, his half brother, Yoelki Cespedes, in this set. I don't know what what is he doing. You know, I think he's just a. Uh, I think he's just a free agent. Cespedes returned to the major league major league action in 2020 against Atlanta, hit a home run, becoming the first designated. Here's some trivia: Yo Yoannis Cespedes became the first uh, designated hitter to hit a home run in the National League. I guess that was the pandemic season, right, where they added the DH there. Cespedes off to a. Then he went to a 161 start to the shortened season. Did not report to the Mets for their August 2nd game. His agent announced during the game Cespedes had opted out of the rest of the 2020 season, citing concerns regarding the coronavirus pandemic. As a result, Cespedes ended his five-year tenure with the Mets and became a free agent at the end of the 2020 season. That's it. That's what the Wikipedia says, so I guess no one signed, no one assigned him. We got Hendry Mendez, yellow chrome to 75. That'll be for the Brewers, Tim. Yeah, the personalized section of his Wikipedia just really doesn't say anything. I guess he's just. Just working on his uh working on his ranch maybe. And we got Jan Contreras, 138 out of 499. Mark Bissett with the Cincinnati Red Legs. Maximo Costa, Atomic, to 150. Rangers, that's going to be Louie. And we got a Henry Davis, that's a nice one. 67 out of 100. Atomic Autograph. For the Pirates, Dusty. And the Pirates, that's the uh, number one overall pick in 2021. I feel like there's been a number of catchers in recent years that have been number one overall picks. Henry Davis. Um, Adley Rushman. And Joey Bart. I think in the last like five, six years, there's been three or four catchers that have gone number one. I think the other number ones have been Casey Mize and Spencer Torkelson, maybe. I don't know if Yasiel Puig will ever be back. Where I, I think he's still trying to play. I feel like he's in Asia somewhere, either, either in Korea or Japan. I feel like he's... I thought, I thought that's what I heard, but maybe that was... Maybe that's what he was thinking about. 
I mean, I feel like a team could... If a team was maybe... There's Curtis Mead to 299. He Oh, he is in Korea now? I mean, if he hits well there, I'm sure a team will give him a shot. Especially with the... Uh, Especially with the DH now, there's more more teams where he can just hit. I don't know if he he had a he has a cannon for an arm, but he just was never never seemed to be in a good position defensively. We try to rely on the arm a little too much when he should be like trying to hit the cutoff man or something like that. So, but I feel like if you just stuck him in as hey, just hit, just hit four times a night. I feel like he could he could contribute if he shows that he can hit well against against Korean pitching. All right, and uh, wow, we made it. That's that, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. That was 2022 Bowman Baseball Jumbo Edition Eight Box Picker Team Number Five. More picker teams in the store on JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. That was a nice Bowman 100 autograph. Here's your recap. Some nice color that we saw there in some autographs. Some good parallels, the nice Henry Davis, among others. Hopefully all of these guys become future stars. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break. Bye-bye.